Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing angiogenesis. Okay, so, uh, we're in the process of discussing sprouting angiogenesis, and what we've seen is that uh, you will have an angiogenic centre which will be releasing vascular endothelial growth factor A, and this will firstly uh, cause the formation of tip cells uh, at nearby capillaries, and these tip cells will then produce phylopodia, uh, which will have very high density um, vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2 expression, uh, and also will be releasing proteolytic enzymes. Now, the tip cells will navigate themselves towards the angiogenic uh, center, and they'll do this by the interaction of the vascular endothelial growth factor A with the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2. Meanwhile, um, what will happen is the endothelial cells that have been left behind, these will proliferate to produce cells which will fill in the gap, basically. And what you'll gradually get then is a stalk being formed. And once you produce these original stalk cells, then those will proliferate to produce more as the tip cell moves further and further. Okay, so let me now show you where we've got to. Okay, so we'll draw this original picture back again. So here is our first capillary here like so, and I'll draw some endothelial cells. So this side hasn't been affected, basically, because this was the side facing away from the angiogenic centre. But I'll just add it for completion. Okay, so there's a layer of endothelial cells, and over here, what's happened is here is an endothelial cell still, and then what you've got is a hole in the basement membrane, so there's no basement membrane here. And then you've got these endothelial cells which are forming this stalk, basically. And there's no lumen here yet, so these endothelial cells in this stalk will be pressed against one another. So here's another endothelial cell. And then right at the head of it, uh, there will then be the tip cell. So I'll put the tip cell here with all its massive great phylopodia coming off like so. Okay, and I usually draw four of those, but in reality there'll be far more. So here's our tip cell, and again, what I've done is made the mistake of now, how am I going to draw the endothelial cells uh, squashed up against one another? Okay, so bad picture, but never mind. Imagine the tip cell is much, much smaller, and basically then what will happen is the endothelial cells in this stalk will be pressed against one another. I'll get it right on the other capillary that I'm about to draw. Okay, so I get another chance at it. So imagine there's no lumen here. Okay, and then these are the endothelial cells continuing on the rest of that capillary. Okay, so then I'll add in a basement membrane where there is a basement membrane. So there'll be a basement membrane here and here, but there'll be a hole in the basement membrane there, and there'll be a basement membrane over here. And this is navigating towards the angiogenic center, which we'll put uh, here. And I'll color that in blue. Okay, so here is the angiogenic center in blue here, which is releasing the uh, vascular endothelial growth factor A. Okay, so this is the angiogenic center. Right, and then we'll have another uh, capillary on the other side over here. Okay, uh, and this will also have a similar thing going on. So let me see if I can draw this better now. I'll plan more this time. So. Here's the stalk here, like so. Here's the rest of the capillary down here. Okay, then we'll have endothelial cells on this side, which I can draw now. So here they are. These ones, remember, are unaffected, so they're just normal old endothelial cells here. Yep. Okay, now let's draw the tip cell in here. So here it is, with its phylopodia coming off the here, and it's much smaller in this case. There we go. And then we've got these endothelial cells which are pressed up against one another, basically, with no lumen in between them. Okay, and these are the stalk cells. So at the moment, we've just got a stalk here, not a blood vessel. So it's not, a, it's not got a lumen down the middle of it. It's a stalk. And that's what I was trying to get across before, but I failed with the picture. Okay, and here are these endothelial cells that are still lining this uh, capillary over here like so. Okay, and then I'll put in the basement membrane again, uh, where there needs to be a basement membrane. 
Okay, so the basement membrane will be in turquoise, and we'll have a basement membrane here, basement membrane here, but no basement membrane around the stalk yet. Okay, so here we have got the stalks that are uh, being navigated towards the angiogenic centre by the tip cells that are at the tip of the stalk. Okay, right, so we're getting the formation of these stalks. The next step is that we're actually going to turn these stalks into tubes, okay? And this process is known as tubulogenesis. So you're actually going to produce a tube. Okay, and in tubulogenesis, what will happen is, firstly, you'll get little packages of air basically being formed. So if I just draw a stalk, if I draw a stalk here, initially what will happen is it will go from having cells that are pressed up against each other to having maybe a few little holes here and there. So maybe there's a hole here. Okay, like so. So we've formed a little hole here. Like so. And this sort of a hole is known as a vacuole. Okay, so I'll put the nuclei of these stalk cells on. So this hole that we've formed here is called a vacuole. And what you'll do is you'll form multiple of these vacuoles, basically. And also, I need to stress that although I've drawn very small stalks here, in reality, these stalks can be much bigger than this. Okay, so you'll produce loads of these vacuoles along um, the... Uh, longitudinal axis of the uh, stalk, basically, and then what will happen is they'll gradually coalesce together to make one continuous lumen. Okay, and then you've got a tube, basically, and at the top of the tube, you then have your tip cell. Now, uh, the next thing that needs to happen is we need to get the two sprouts now to meet one another, okay, and this will allow fusion of them together, basically. So what will then happen is the two tip cells will meet initially, and then the two blood vessels will fuse together, and what we'll then have is a uh, continuous tube between uh, the two blood vessels. Okay, so let me get another piece of paper and draw this for you. Okay, so the overall result then now is that the two um, sp um, tubes that you now have two sprouts uh, will fuse together. Okay, so here's one capillary, here's the other down here, and what you're now going to have is a connection between the two, like so. So a little blood vessel that now goes between them, a little capillary. Now it's not complete yet because, remember, we don't have any basement membrane and we don't have any pericytes or fibroblasts around it yet. Okay, so to make it a complete capillary, we need the pericytes, and um, we certainly need a basement membrane. Okay, but we do have endothelial cells lining uh, a little tube here. Okay, and the first thing to say is that now we've got this complete tube, what can happen is you can get blood flowing down this tube, basically, and this means that... Uh, the angiogenic centre, if that angiogenic centre was releasing vascular endothelial growth factor because of hypoxia, well, if we've now got this tube running down the middle, uh, then the, that bit of tissue won't be hypoxic anymore because there'll be oxygenated blood running through this tube. Okay, so certainly the tissue here won't be hypoxic anymore and therefore you'll stop producing vascular endothelial growth factor A. Okay, so the tissue will stop producing the signal for vascular, um, sorry, for angiogenesis. Okay, right. Um, let me just now finish these capillaries. So here are the endothelial cells of this capillary, like so. Okay, and then the next process for the com to complete this new um, blood vessel that we've created here is to put a basement membrane around it. So at the moment, we've got basement membrane uh, surrounding the endothelial cells of our original two capillaries, but this new structure that we've created does not have a basement membrane surrounding it. Okay, so, whoops. so here are the two capillaries. Okay, and as we can see, these endothelial cells are not sitting on any basement membrane. So what will happen next, once you've formed the tube, what you'll then do is put some basement membrane around here. So you'll lay down basement membrane. Okay, and then you'll also put pericytes and fibroblasts around there. And when you add pericytes around here, so let me put a pericyte here. And I think we showed pericytes previously in yellow. 
okay? Uh, that process of putting pericytes around your newly formed capillary, so here's our pericyte, uh, is known as pericyte stabilization. Okay, and that finishes your new blood vessel. Okay, so that now is the overview of sprouting angiogenesis and how you create a new connection between two capillaries and it usually does in only involve capillaries so it's a, something that occurs to capillaries it's a way of joining up and producing new capillaries okay now what we're going to turn our attention to is intersusceptive or splitting angiogenesis and this is something that can affect bigger blood vessels basically okay and i've spelt it wrong damn the double S should have been the first one, never mind. So, intersusceptive. <coughs> okay, like so. Intersusceptive, or if you like, splitting angiogenesis. Okay, so as I say, this is something that we're going to look at in capillaries, but it's something that can happen in bigger blood vessels as well. Okay, and again, it will happen in response to vascular endothelial growth factor A, basically. Although the actual um, mechanisms underlying splitting angiogenesis are not known, what I'm going to give you is a description of what actually happens. At the moment, there's still, you know, the, so far, the research into intersusceptive slash splitting angiogenesis has all focused on proving that it actually exists rather than determining its mechanisms. Mechanism. So we still don't really know that much about it because proving it exists is so difficult. Okay, but we are now convinced that it does actually exist. So uh, let me show you what's going to happen. So let me show you a capillary and then we'll see what's going to happen in intersusceptive splitting angiogenesis slash splitting angiogenesis. So actually firstly, before I show you the cross section of a capillary, let me just show you it in longitudinal sections. So let's say this is a blood vessel. Okay, the principle of intersusceptive slash splitting angiogenesis is that what you're going to do is split part of this blood vessel into two. So basically, you're going to split this center bit into two separate blood vessels, like so. So you've now got two separate channels that will then coalesce. This is what's going to happen in intersusceptive angiogenesis. You're basically going to put a division down here, a wall down here, and split uh, what was one blood vessel into two. Okay, so that's the difference between intersusceptive uh, slash splitting angiogenesis and sprouting angiogenesis. In sprouting angiogenesis, you basically just uh, bud or sprout off the side, basically. Whereas in splitting angiogenesis, you're actually splitting the blood vessel into two separate channels. Okay, so let's now see this process from a cross section. So this is it in longitudinal, and we'll look at it more stepwise. Okay, so we'll start off with our capillary, and it needs to be quite a big capillary. So it'll be two endothelial cells making up the circumference of this capillary rather than one. So here's one of the endothelial cells, and here's the second endothelial cell. Okay, and uh, here are the nuclei. So there's one nucleus here and one here. And then, of course, these endothelial cells are sitting on a basement membrane, which, remember, is mainly made up of the protein collagen, but also contains other protein components, since, such as fibrillin and laminins. So here is the basement membrane that they're sitting on. And then, outside of the basement membrane, you'll then have other cells, such as pericytes and also fibroblasts. So I'll draw a few pericytes here. Now, of course, we're going to split this capillary into two, so I'll draw two pericytes, one for each of the new capillaries we're going to form. So here are the two pericytes, and then we'll also have a fibroblast, which I'll put here. Okay, and we'll only have one of those, so I'll colour code these again. So the pericytes are in yellow, so here's a pericyte, and then the fibroblast will have in blue, so here is the fibroblast. Okay, right. So in intersusceptive angiogenesis, what's going to happen is, firstly, uh, you're going to get the protrusion of these endothelial cell boundaries into the lumen of uh, the capillary. Okay, so step one. Basically, what's going to happen is these endothelial cells are going to start curving their outer edges back in. 
Okay, so they're going to start to make this wall that's going to separate the two, uh, well, this one capillary into two, basically. Okay, so it's like so. So here are the two capillaries. They're folding back inwards, making these protrusions into the lumen, like so. So they kind of look like crabs, almost. Right, uh, so then the basement membrane will be protruding in with it. So the basement membrane will follow the endothelial cells. Okay, like so. And uh, the pericytes will remain where they are, so they're not doing anything yet. Okay, but the fibroblast will start to follow this crack inwards. So I'm just going to put this in now quickly. Here's the fibroblast, which is the interesting one. That's doing something interesting, whereas the pericytes are just sort of, you know, out of the way over here. Okay, so I'll colour in the pericytes again in yellow, and then we'll colour in the fibroblast in blue. So you'll get step one, this first stage, is that you're getting uh, these protrusions of the wall of the capillary inwards to start the splitting process of the capillary into two separate capillaries. Okay, now, what's going to happen is in step three, you're going to actually get these walls being completed. So the endothelial cells are going to come down and close off, basically, to create two separate capillaries, and the basement membrane will follow. OK, so let me show this. So here is one of these capillaries now, like so. And it's folded all the way around. Well, the endothelial cells folded all the way around, like so. And then here is the no another endothelial cell well, the other endothelial cell. And again, it's folded all the way around to close off and make a separate capillary here, like so. OK, so the basement membrane is going to follow. So now what you've got, then, is this complete coating of basement membrane around both of them. OK, like so. So you've got a bilayer, effectively, of endothelial cells and basement membrane that is separating off these two separate capillaries now. And then we'll add in the pericytes. So the pericytes are still staying nicely out of the way over here. OK. And then the fibroblast is getting ready to push itself in. And that's going to be the final step. Basically, the fibroblast is going to push its way in between those two and actually split them apart, basically. OK. So they are separate blood vessels now. But, you know, they're still attached together. So we want them to become unattached. And it's the fibroblast that's going to be responsible for that. OK, so here are the pericytes again in yellow. OK, so now that's step three, that you actually close them off and form two separate blood vessels. And now step four is that that fibroblast in blue is going to push its way between the two capillaries, separate them out, and then once it's in between, it will start synthesizing a huge amount of collagen to separate them out even more, basically. So let's draw this then now. So here is one of our endothelial cells, making up its own little capillary here. OK, here is our, well, actually, I'll give them a bit more space now because they're being distanced apart. Here is the second capillary here. OK, here is its endothelial cell, like so. And here is the nucleus of that endothelial cell. And now, of course, they're both surrounded by a separate basement membrane, separate layer of basement membrane. And basically, sitting in between them now is that fibroblast. And that fibroblast will be synthesizing connective tissue such as collagen that will be making up the space between the two. So now the fibroblast will be in here, nice and happy, separating the two off. OK, so here is our fibroblast in blue. Right. And now each of those capillaries then will have its own pericytes surrounding it. So here is it, this one's pericyte, and here is this one's pericyte. So that is the process then of splitting angiogenesis or intersusceptive angiogenesis. And very little is understood about this. We do believe that it now exists. We can see uh, blood vessels doing this, basically. We can see these gaps being made between blood vessels, but we don't understand the um, signaling processes that underlie this. What we do know is that vascular endothelial growth factor A is responsible for inducing this just like it is sprouting angiogenesis.